My name's Jason Kingsley. I'm the CEO and creator director of Rebellion, a company that makes games, publishes comics like 2000 AD, and books. I'm also a keen horseman and historian with a deep practical interest in the Middle Ages. I've been working with and competing on horses most of my life. Today I've invited a friend and fellow jouster, Arna Coots, to join me at home where I train and look after my horses. Both Arna and I are expert riders on specially trained horses. My four-legged partner today is called Warlord. He's a Lusitano. Arna is on Maximilian, a Spanish horse. We are both in the fortunate position to be interested in the academic side of medieval warfare, but to also have the rare skills, facilities and correctly trained horses to put some of the techniques into practice. At least that's what we think. We're going to try to explore some aspects of mounted combat in a practical manner in this, the first of several short documentaries. Hello Arno, welcome. We are going to have a go at doing some of these classic maneuvers we see in some of the fight books. Um, but you've done quite a lot of research on them before and you had some ideas and I wanted to capture that while we're on the ground, not on a horse. It might be a bit safer. <laughs> so do you want to, should we grab some of those poles and, I think that's and, and have a go, yeah? Right. Well, let's, let's get into some of the specifics. You had some lovely lance techniques. This is the idea that yeah. I was chasing you trying to spear you with a lance and there's a turn. Yeah. I want to try, if we could do that on foot, yeah. then maybe that's something we can go and get the horses yeah. together and actually try it out mounted, <laughs> see whether we can actually yeah, succeed in doing it. So I'm trying to change, I'm trying to get you, so I'm coming towards you. Yep. And when I noticed that, I lift my lance to myself and yep. put it on my left shoulder, pointing it at you, which is already yep. kind of getting in your way. Yes. And now I turn my horse with the left bend in a canter pirouette. And I can even go straight into That's really control. interesting. That's going to be so interesting to try because it's about timing and distance. Shall we have a cup of tea, warm up, <laughs> and then right. go and go on some horses and try this? These are really interesting. You've got some ideas and what we're going to try and experiment with. I like the pointy bit here heading towards my head. No? Well, or I, the other I way think around. this should be my head. <laughs> okay, I think that's... this should be my head. Oh, right. It looks to me like they're, in, they're going quite fast, potentially. Yeah, this, so... this would, um, would, what they're really showing is a carrière, which is an extension of the canter into a much, much faster canter. Um, it could be that they're just wanting to show a fast canter. There's a lot of discussion about that they didn't know how to, how to draw it. Mm. But this can be done on a horse, mm. this very movement. And it makes perfect sense to hold your horse, hold your horse, hold your horse. This is my moment. Bang! And then really stretch the horse almost like a flat jump, yeah. like you're jumping a ditch. But what we've got is one instant where they're trying to illustrate a technique. So what's going to be interesting for us to do is to see how this works from the perspective of this bloke and this bloke. We're not going to wear armour because we actually want to pick up some sound and also we want to be aware of what's going on. We could try it one day maybe with armour. But it's going to be very interesting to see where it could go from here. And obviously we will never know because this is a snapshot, but I think we can get some good indications of what's going on. Uh, the, the good thing about this particular technique is that it's described a fair few times. So we have right. a lot of little tidbits and if we, we extrapolate them all together, I think we can have a fairly good guess. Good. Right, come on then, let's go to the horses. All right, let's go. <laughs> so what we've got is a 15th century saddle. This is a reproduction based on museum, existing museum pieces. It's very different from a modern saddle. Uh, in particular, the biggest differences are the amount of weight spreading that goes on on the back of the saddle here. Uh, a modern saddle would be cut off at this point, so all your weight will be going through a much smaller patch on the horse's back. Because I'm potentially riding in armour and also riding in a different style on a 15th century saddle, it's, it spreads the weight out over the horse's back much, much more effectively, I think, than a modern saddle. Good lad. So we start to tack up.
So these these represent, I guess, these represent the sort of 15th century hand and a half sword, don't they? They're quite yeah, the, 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 what they call quite, the long sword. The long sword, so which quite, is defined by the length of its hilt. So the long yeah. sword has a long hilt, whereas the sword has a not so long hilt, but the same blade. I guess one can use it two-handed if one needs to, or yeah, I suppose you could. Yeah. And the other thing that, that they they use the the hilt for is actually um, couching it. So on horseback, they even couch. The sword oh, I've like seen, that. Yeah, all right. So yeah. There, there's there's all sorts of things that you can use a hilt for as well, especially on horseback. Now on horseback, if a horse steps forward, of course you're going to thrust at them really hard. <laughs> so that's one of the things is being strong at the sword. But I think most of what we're going to try and play with today maybe should be being weak at the sword, as they say. So how do you want me to be weak at the sword? What would oh, you like you just me make to make a strike, and I'll be weak okay. at the sword. So the trick is that we we engage on this side, and I turn my sword around and I hit him. I'm already turning behind him, and I'm also getting on his eight o'clock position, which is mentioned even by Guerinier in the 18th century still as the dominant position. And this is a horrible place to have somebody because you've got to come across your own body, you can't really see properly, you're twisting around, you can't certainly go this way, you can't really see at all, you've got no chance that way, and this way, well, yeah, this, this is the death quarter if you're a horseman you do not want an enemy in this quarter at all as you can see he's just standing there smiling and i'm fretting already and cover a lot of ground i've always thought that's one of the biggest things that people get wrong in the movies and on telly and in reenactment you see people like us clanging away against each other which is fine for what we're doing in terms of demonstration but in war your advantage is your height your speed and the ability to be relatively still and then surge forward with all that weight behind you out of trouble quite a long way in quite yes. a short period of time. So. And, and usually uh, a rider is outnumbered because riders are expensive. And so people are going to try and, and lap around you and, and stab you from the back. So this only works when you're in one place. If you're constantly moving to a different, different spot, it becomes very difficult for the infantry to position themselves around you. So if you have a huge chaotic melee, uh, the movement is the key. And right. as long as you keep moving, you keep dominating. Yes. Yeah, but if you're stationary, then yes. the, the foot can get around you, drag you off your horse, as potentially happened with Richard III's charge. For instance. You know, for, that's a possibility. Uh, he's only just starting to learn this, but maybe I can give it a go. Uh, what they would do is actually they would, they would bide their time by means of two-time canters. So such collected canters that they are no longer a three-beat, no longer a four beat, but they become a two beat. Right. And you can do these essentially on the spot, and you can just wait and loiter. Be interesting to see that, because I'm not sure I've tried that on him, and I, I might. <laughs> Good boy. Yes. Yes, so all the energy of that horse is kind of bottled up into its, into its backside. Good boy. Yeah. See if I can get anything. No. Go! Good boy. Well, a bit messy. Yeah, but you Very can messy, see that but you're collecting the horse in yeah. what, would, what, would be, what would be referred to as a petit galop, a small gallop. Yes. And the, the small gallops are still a four beat. So they, they still cover a bit of ground and, and a remarkable amount of ground. If, yes. But so much less than most people think of when they think of a galloping horse. Yes. I've also noticed when I've been doing the club melee stuff, inexperienced people tend to sword chase. So they tend to sort of hold their sword yes. so, so that you can then hit the sword. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and it's really strange because you find yourself thinking, why have they put their sword, why have they put a block in there? I'm just going to go around it. Yes. And then they get very confused because they've been brought up with movies to yes. think that you are actually clanging swords together for effect and potentially whirling around, exposing your back to the other and person. And yet when you, uh, when you do it very correctly, you cross your swords all the time. So they've probably seen this image and not really understood what it's about. Yeah. Because you would end up a lot of the time, I'm going to hit you, you're going to hit me, and we and end we, up we in end the middle. Up, yeah. So you, you try to do that, bang. Ah. That's basically and as simple as it gets. Yeah. But the, I think the theory is, if you're past the end of this... Yes then I've got, you know, very little. And then I go yeah. and put it in front of me. Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, you're taking a hell of a risk, but that's your only option. Well, basically, once I've lost my landswork for whatever reason, I just didn't bring one. Yeah. That's all I've got. Yeah. 
Um, it, it's your only play. I've got, a, I've got a lance, I'm trying to kill you. You've got to get past the point. If you've got past my point, you've got the advantage again, because you've got the shorter weapon. But the initial thing is, again, a forward strike. So it's, it's important not to strike down, but to strike forward like that. And it's remarkably easy to catch the point. To get this particular control yeah. is relatively hard. But I could I, either just thrust straight into your face, I could thrust down and just pass your, your lance by, yeah. or I could get this, yeah. this, this grab. And I don't really care when I start which one it's going to be. Yeah, because once I've gone past, I've just got this pole, and this isn't really going to... You can't come across me but you could just take control of this. Yes. And if, especially if this is in a lance rest, yes. which it would be for war, yes. it's fairly linked to my body yes. and I'm not that mobile. Now, so. If I just thrust up here, which is my simplest and, and kind of safest option, you can defend this by just taking the point over my head. Basically. Just, I, just, I just push because yeah. I'm getting stronger. As you slide down the lance, I've yes. got more strength. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And you, you basically just lift it up as if you would have done anyway, yeah. which is also your gut feeling. Yeah. So, so, um, so this is why so, this whole technique comes in here, because right. that plays into my cards here. And yeah. I can actually use this to then grab it and yeah. couch it myself. Yeah. But one of the things you could do is now do a shoulder in. Yeah, so yeah. sideways, like, yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah. Basically, we, we end up in this, you know, you want so to I not could... not lose this turning fight. Yeah, so I keep my, I keep my, yeah, and I could try and push past you or something. If you go yeah. fast enough behind, yes, and yeah, now and then go fast could... me. You see, when you got yeah. the shoulder in, I have to let go. Yeah. So it's a, a lot of it's about leverage and physics. And positioning. positioning. Physics and positioning, as always. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's really fascinating. We did, we talked about one on the ground, about me attacking you from behind. Yeah, I'll just take your yeah. lance. Um, so I've only done this dry, so to speak. So yeah. I'm, I'm riding along at a yeah. canter. And I'm noticing you, so I drop my shoulder and hop. There we go. Bang. Yeah. Yes. So I drop my shoulder and hop. There we go. Bang. Yeah. Yes. That's a really interesting. It's, it's, it's a really quite amazing how few people can, can ride to the level that you really, and have the equipment as well, uh, to the level that you can really experiment with these things to the full. For instance, if we'd done this lance technique just at the walk, everybody would have gone, oh yeah, yeah, that's clever. <laughs> but the moment you do it at canter, it's a completely different yes. dynamic. So um, it is a, it's, it's always a pleasure to, uh, to be able to cross lance. Well, to, the to the next time, next yes. time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>